If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. In order to solve part A, we're going to look at the equation that gives the work done by a force. Now, in this case, the force is being applied by a chopper, so we've denoted the work as W sub chopper. And then we know that that's going to be equal to the magnitude of the force that the chopper is applying to the cart, the displacement of the cart, and then the angle between the force and the displacement. Now, the question notes the force has a value of 35 newtons and that the angle is 25 degrees and the displacement is also given as 50 meters, so we can simply plug the known values into the equation. And when we multiply these values, we get approximately 1.6 times 10 to the power of 3, and then the standard unit of work is joules, so this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, we're being asked to calculate the net work done on the cart. Now, we know that the net work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the cart. But the question notes that the cart is moving at constant speed. Now, if a cart or any other object is moving at constant speed, of course, that means its final velocity is equal to its initial velocity, which means that its final kinetic energy is equal to its initial kinetic energy. And when the final and initial kinetic energies are the same, the change in the kinetic energy will equal zero. And that means that the net work done on the cart in this scenario is zero joules. For part C, we simply have to understand that the net work done on the cart is equal to the work done by the chopper plus the work done by friction. We can subtract both sides of the equation by the work done by friction. And then, of course, we can see that the work done by the chopper is simply the difference in the work done by friction and the net work. Now, the question notes that the frictional forces are not changing, so that means that WF is not changing either. And also, since the cart is maintaining the same speed, that means that the network is not changing. Well, if neither of these two values is going to change, that means the work done by the shopper also will not change. So that will actually answer the second part of part C. When it asks what about the work done on the cart by the shopper, you can say that that remains unchanged. However, we will see that the applied force is actually going to turn out to be different. And the reason for that is that in part C, the shopper is pushing horizontally on the cart. Now, when we push horizontally on an object and the displacement is still pointing to the right, we can see that the angle between the force applied by the shopper and the displacement would be zero degrees. So we can say that theta is equal to zero degrees. Now, let's go back to the work equation, which tells us work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of the angle theta. Let's actually divide this equation by delta x cos theta. In that way, we'll be able to solve for the force and take a closer look at it. Now, we can see that the cosine of the angle appears in the denominator of this expression. When the angle was 35 degrees, excuse me, when the angle was 25 degrees, as it was in part A, we would have the cosine of 25. When the angle in part C is zero degrees, we would have the cosine of zero. Now we need to understand that the cosine of zero degrees is larger than the cosine of 25 degrees. And so in part C, the cosine of the angle is going to be a larger value. But since it's in the denominator, that actually will tend to diminish the force. So we'll reiterate that. In the expression for the force, when we make the cosine of the angle larger, that actually will reduce the magnitude of force applied by the shopper. So to summarize, when the question asks, would the shopper's applied force be larger or smaller? It would indeed be smaller in part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon. Also subscribe to the channel and remember that you can stay tuned and send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.